Hey guys, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about backups. Now, what's going to confuse you is I'm also going to talk a lot about logging and restores or recovery. And you may ask why I don't care. I just want to take a backup. You can't take a backup until you know what you're configured for and what type of recovery you want to do, whether it's to the end of your last backup to a specific point in time. So I'm going to cover a little overview in the very beginning about why we're doing what we're going to do. If you don't care about this and you want to get straight to the command, go ahead to the description section and click the timestamp. It'll take you directly to where you need to go. You ready? All right, let's go to the overview. Before we talk about any sort of backup, whether it is offline or online, we have to briefly talk about what type of logging is being done in the database. There are two types, circular logging and archival logging. Circular logging is the default when you create a brand new database. And what that means is that as DB2 is doing work, it is recording what it is doing in a predetermined set of logs, in this case four. However, it's only keeping enough information to maintain the immediate integrity if we suddenly had a crash and it will start to reuse its logs as it goes. So we are not sitting and spitting off logs somewhere else in the system. We're continuously reusing them. Because of that, with an offline backup, you can only restore to the point that your backup was taken. No further. This means if your backup was taken at midnight, I cannot restore till midnight and bring the database to some point in time after that, like after a failed load at three o'clock in the morning. Got it? All right, let's take a look at the backup itself. So the offline backup is fairly simple. It's a single command. I'm gonna show you a little context around it, but it's pretty quick and easy. The first thing to do is see if anybody's connected. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is this is an offline backup. This is not an online backup. This doesn't allow you to restore to a certain point of time. Ultimately, everybody has to get off the server. So you're going to go to your system administrators or whoever controls the application and ask them to please bring it down nicely. Or you're going to give your developers a heads up and say everybody off of the box. But in the end, you're going to end up having to force off any rogue connections. So it's DB2 force applications all. And you will find that everybody has been bumped off of the system. Now, you need to deactivate the database before you start taking the backup. If I issue the command now, it's going to tell me it's not in the proper state. So it's DB2 deactivate database sample. Now the database is at a good point. Everybody's off, the database is down. To take the backup, go to the directory you want. And if you notice, I'm actually over here in db2fs backups. The command is pretty simple. I'm gonna show you one or two variations of it. It's db2 backup database sample two and you could do one of two things. If you're in the directory you want, you can just hit a period. If you want to be explicit, we're going to type it out, which will be db2fs backups. And you could close this now and be absolutely good. It'll start running for you. But what I like to do is type the word compress. This will actually compress the backup file real time. Now, Pay attention to this if you're running with a large database. Compress as you back up slows the backup down. It can actually slow the backup down by half or a third in some cases that I've seen. But if it's a smaller database or regular size database, this is usually the command that I'll go with. Sample is pretty small, so it's going to back up relatively quick here. But there we go. Now, pay attention to this timestamp. You're going to need to know that later when you try to do a restore. You're also going to see that that timestamp is in the actual file name of the backup file. 
so you could always refer to it later. Something else that I'd like to do is run a check backup on the actual file. This makes sure there's no corruption, especially if I'm going to be doing something like a DB2 upgrade or I'm doing something really heavy and I need to make sure this is solid. The command is DB2 CK BKP and I mess that up every time. And then the backup name. It's going to go through and tell you the verification is complete. Something else I like about this command is the dash H switch. It's going to take a look at the header of the file and it'll give you some really good information if you need it later. So it's going to go and tell you, hey, here's the name of the database. It's going to tell you down here that it was an offline backup. It'll tell you that it was compressed. It'll give you a lot of good information you will need if you need to reference it later. Then it'll go through and do the image verification and everything looks great. So that's it. Like I said, the offline backup is pretty simple. It's a single command. Just remember to force off your applications, bring your database down ahead of time. And if you really want to be cautious, issue that check backup command. As I mentioned with offline backups, we can't talk about online backups until we figure out what type of logging we're doing on the system. If you're doing archive logging, it opens up a whole new world to you on what you can do to recover. It opens up point in time recovery. Remember in our previous example, our backup was at midnight, but the failure was at 3 a.m. The best we could do is bring the database up to midnight and we would have to redo any work after that. When you're dealing with online backups, you get to point in time recovery. So we can restore the midnight backup, but then we can start applying logs one at a time right up to 2.59 a.m. before we failed. It gets you very, very close to the time of failure. Now, why is that a possibility? Well, in offline backups, our logging was circular. We were just holding enough information to ensure integrity at that point in time, and we were writing over our logs. In archive logging, we actually start shoving logs off to a different file system to refer to later. So in this example, we have our four logs and we're writing to them one at a time, just like we did before. But after the information becomes dated, we've used all of our logs, we've committed everything, it will start pushing logs off to a different file system. These logs are no longer actively being used, but they're being retained to refer to later. So let's say that your failure at 3 a.m. is around log 6. What we're going to do is restore our backup for midnight, and then we will apply logs one at a time up to log number 5. That brings us up to just before failure. So you really can't separate type of backup from logging. This is the more complicated of the two. Now that you understand it, let's go take a look at the actual commands themselves. So the online backup process is extremely similar to the offline backup. However, we need to make sure our environment is configured for it. So if we take a look at those database configuration parameters and look for the logging area, you'll see what I mean. So it's db2 get db cfg4 sample and then I'm going to grep out log. And if you look down here, this is what we were looking for before. Log arc meth one is set to a current disk and file system. Another hint you'll see here is the log archive compression, which is set to on. So we know our database is configured to do online backups. Before we had to do a bunch of other steps, we had to force the applications and deactivate the database. That's not the case here. We can look at our database and then see if it's active. And it is. So we have the sample database. There is nothing connected to it right now, but it is listed as an active database. It is on and waiting. So we don't have to force, we don't have to deactivate, we just issue the backup command, which is db2 backup 
database sample. Here's the key online to and either dot if you want to do it shortcut or explicit. Again, I'm going to issue the compress. This will slow your backup down, but it makes your file a lot smaller. I'm going to show you one thing here. This is the actual command we're going to use, but because I still see this rolling around in scripts and I still see some old school DBAs issue this, I want to show you another variation that you don't have to use anymore and that is include logs. You will see this sometimes. Basically when you're doing an online backup, you're saying backup the database but also backup that last little log that allows me to roll forward to the next logical commit point to right around when this backup ended. Before you had to tell it explicitly to do that. Now it actually will do it for you without being told and it's encapsulated in the backup file. You can go extract it later and I'll show you that in the restore episodes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It's going to back up. It'll be pretty quick because it's sample. Again, you have your time stamp. Pay attention to that because you may need it later on when you need to do the restore. We have our backup file here. How would we tell that if this is the offline or back uh, offline or online backup? We would use that check backup command again. Besides, it's going to tell us if our file is actually sound. So it's db2 ck bkp and then I'm going to use the h command. Pick the file. Not only is it going to verify that the file is sound, but it'll go and tell us other things like, hey, this is the one that was online and it is compressed. So that's it. The offline and online backup commands are extremely similar. It just has to do with what your purpose is later on and how the database architecture around logging is set up now.